Holy Spirit. Thank you for your spirit, oh God. God, sweep through this place in the name of Jesus. God, you've been so good to us. You've been so kind to us, oh God. Father, we're grateful. You're an awesome God. You're a mighty God. You are so, so, so faithful, God. Oh, God, I love you tonight. I give you all the glory. Because you just deserve it. You don't do anything else, God. You just deserve the glory. <laughs> you just deserve it. You don't do nothing else. You don't move another mountain. You don't change another situation. You don't turn nothing else in my favor. God, you're just good. You're just good. And you're just faithful. And you're consistent with us. You're faithful to your promises. You're faithful to your word, oh God. And we bless your name today. Oh God, you're mighty. You are a mighty God. You're an awesome God. And we bless your name tonight. at Victory Christian Outreach Church. It's Wednesday! And you made it. You're here now. Type in there. I'm here. I'm good. I made it. I'm here. I'm good. I made it. Type it in there. I want to know you made it tonight. We in this thing together. We made it all the way from Sunday. That's a big deal. The enemy had a whole lot of time trying to take us out of here but you made it you made it ah, yes you made it again and you're going to continue to make it we are going to continue to make it we're going to continue to press forward hallelujah oh god we love you thank you holy spirit you're a mighty god let's just jump right in there let's worship the name of the lord tonight to everybody that's in the building hey victory Good evening. <laughs> Good evening, victory. Hallelujah. The mighty God. Yes. Y'all ready? I just really need some praise and worship. I don't know about anybody else. I, I need it tonight. Well, you can jump in there with me and give me some of your strength. I'm going to give you some of my strength. And we're all going to rely on the strength of the Holy Spirit.
say, Lord, you're mighty. 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 Lord, you're mighty.
We worship you with our entire hearts tonight, oh God. God, no matter what, we're gonna worship you forever. No matter what. God, we know you can, and we know you will. But God, while we're waiting, we'll worship you forever. Until you move, until you decide that that's what you're gonna do, we'll worship you forever. Because not only do you deserve it, but God, we need to be in your presence. to 
worship you tonight. You are so good, Lord. We honor you. We adore you. We're here because we love you. Because you are our Father. We want to please you. We want to make you smile. We want to do what you called us to do. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your strength in this atmosphere. Thank you, oh God, that everyone who is watching online, God, that your strength and your peace is flooding their atmosphere right now in the name of Jesus. We bless you. And you are so big that you're able to be here and there and everywhere else all at the same time. And we give you glory for that, Father. right now just pull it in pull your mind in off whatever happened before this moment whatever you gotta deal with when you leave pull your mind and your thoughts in and just begin to say father I love you I love you oh God I put my mind on you father thank you Jesus your hands together and give a praise glory to God come on for those of you who are at home hallelujah come on open up your mouth at home and give him glory today glory to God hallelujah thank you Lord glory 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 hallelujah sometimes it's good to just sit still for a minute sometimes it's good to just sit still He's so faithful. He's so faithful. There's nobody like him in all the earth. In all the earth. In all the earth. Nobody is faithful. 
faithful. That's him. And all the earth. And all the earth. Nobody as consistent as him. In all the earth. Anybody searched all over, couldn't find nobody. Search all over, couldn't find nobody. Search high and low, still couldn't find nobody. Nobody great, nobody great. talking about to be able to connect to that moment right there you got to be one that searched for people who gave people a chance and let people in when you said you weren't gonna do it no more and you gave them another chance and another chance and they keep letting you down and keep proving that you shouldn't have given them a chance the first second third time around you realize it's all right to give them a chance because ain't nobody we greater than God hallelujah glory Nobody's going to love you like God will. Nobody will keep you like he will. Ain't nobody going to be as faithful as he will. Hallelujah. Hey, you can only have great expectations of him. Hey, you can only have great expectations of your God. Hallelujah. Hey, nobody greater. Hey, there's nobody greater. Say it.
you can expect him to protect and keep and cover, protect and keep and cover, protect and keep and cover. He is your God. He's your father. He's your father. He's your father. Nobody greater than him. Hey! Nobody greater than him. Hey! God, we give you glory. God, we give you glory. Rada ma shanda na na mo kongro mo shanda. Rini ni ana ma 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 shanda na ma kiri oro mo shanda ya. We give you glory, God. Rini ni ana ma 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 shanda na na mo kongro. Reke na ma shanda. Rini ni na ma 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 shaya. Oh God, oh God, oh God, oh God, oh God, oh God. Heal those broken expectations. Heal the wounded heart tonight, oh God. Rini ni ana ma 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 shanda. Reke ma shaya. Rimi kimi a shanda na 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 ma kromo kromo sha. You are our Father. You are our Father. You are our Father. You are our Father. Okay. 
everything I am, everything I'm not. I'm yours, Lord. Try me now and see, see if I can be complete. Everything I am, everything I'm not, I'm yours, Lord. Try me now and see, see if I can be completely yours. See, that's when you're done fighting. That's what it looked like and it sounded like when you're done trying to have it your way. And you like, okay, fine, whatever. Just go and do whatever you're going to do. Let's get this over with. Because the quicker you can get it over with, the faster I can move on to the next thing. Come on. Anybody tired of going through the same circle, same cycle over and over again? Come on, somebody holler out enough is enough. Come on online. Come on, type it in there. Enough is enough. Come on. Come on, say, I'm over it now. Come on. I'm over it. It's time to come on out of this thing. Hallelujah. Time to come out of this thing. Glory to God, it's time to come out. Time to come out, time to come out. Glory to God, it's time to come on out of this thing. Hallelujah. Let's get into the word tonight. Glory to God. Glory to God. Before we do this, I want to pray for a few of our members while we're in this moment. I want to pray for I remember Daphne Richardson and her family and the loss of her grandmother this past week and um, her grandmother was like a mother anybody ever had a grandmama that was like a mama yep yeah and her children her family they are experiencing a great loss we want to cover them in prayer we also want to cover the family of Sharice Hubbard and we want in the loss of her grandmother and grandfather we want to cover the Maul family in the loss of their mom we want to cover the Jones family in the loss of Minister Janice Jones and there has been a lot of loss in this season but how many of you all know that God is always in control I don't care how horrible it seems he is always in control. And all you got to do is take a deep breath and choose to trust him. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we thank you tonight. We thank you, oh God, that you inhabit, you sit in the praises of your people. And Father, we have lifted you up, God. We've magnified you, not for anything, but because we love you. You're our father and you're all we have. And so tonight as your children... God, we come to you and we ask, Father, that you cover, Father, the families in this ministry that have experienced so much loss. Father, the Richardson family, God, we thank you right now for covering her, her children, God, her home, her entire family in the name of Jesus, her mother. Thank you for covering them like never before. Peace that passes all understanding. Thank you covering the Jones family oh God we thank you for brother Kennard and Jaleesa thank you for peace oh God and their family thank you for covering Sharice God and her entire family in their loss we thank you for covering oh God the, the family of Miss Pearl our family thank you for covering us God and giving us peace the Maul family thank you for covering them father we give you glory tonight oh God and we bless you father that we're your children you are not out of control you're not wondering what's happening you got your hand on everything and we choose to trust you in this season and we thank you that in the midst of this you are still getting all the glory in Jesus name we pray and we seal it with amen and amen glory to God come on if you're listening and you're looking online can you type amen in there can you help me seal that amen Deidre you're not online tonight so you can't type it in glory to God so welcome in the place amen hallelujah we thank God for all of you tonight for everyone who came through those doors and 
who has just come in. I saw a couple just kind of just ran in. They was like, if I could just get in, then I'll get I, the rest of it will work out. Anybody feel like that tonight? If I could just get through the door, everything else is going to be all right. Glory to God. So we thank God tonight. And some of y'all just jumped in and rolled in like it was a, a boot camp. That's cool. Just get through the door. It's all we need, and we'll help you do the rest. Amen. Can we give God praise for the praise and worship team tonight? Glory to God. We're set in the atmosphere. We thank God for this ministry team and we thank God tonight that we are all praying and we are all mindful so that every time we come in here we are never let down amen thank you Jesus we give God praise for our own apostle Lee in his absence tonight can we give God praise for him amen glory to God glory to God amen amen I do realize glory to God that many of you who are now members who are here now you have not set under the uh, the covering of Apostle Lee, um, and, but I want you to know that for those of you who say, oh, Pastor Daphne, I'm talking, every time you say something, that just, that right there just was right what I needed it. I mean, every, Pastor Daphne, every time I come in that door, everything I need is right there. Apostle Lee and Apostle Doris Rice are the reasons why. Every time you come in this door right now, you get exactly what you need, amen? So we give God praise for Apostle Doris tonight as well. Amen, glory to God, hallelujah. We give God praise for her. She's gone on to be with the Lord. She's not physically with us, but she's always with us. Amen. Amen. Let's get into the word tonight. Turn with me, please, to Proverbs chapter 18, verse 19. Glory to God. I'm in the New King James Version. And then I need you to pull that same scripture up for me, Shay, in the message version. Proverbs 18, chapter 18, verse 19. Thank you, Jesus. Anybody got their Bibles? Oh, I see some books. Y'all got Bibles? Ah! Not just phones. Come on, Bibles. Yes. Amen. Come on. Don't, don't feel bad. Phones will do it. Phones got the whole Bible on it. But it's something about turning them pages. Amen. <laughs> Glory to God. Proverbs chapter 18, verse 19. It says here, and can we stand, please, for the reading of the word of God? We honor the word tonight. I know we're not uh, super, super traditional, uh, churchy, 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 but the word is the word. Amen. And we honor it tonight. Proverbs chapter 18, verse 19. It says here, a brother offended is harder to win than a strong city. And contentions are like the bars of a castle. A brother offended is harder to win than a strong city. And contentions are like the bars of a castle. Now give me that same scripture in the message version, Shay. Glory to God. How many of y'all like the message version? Y'all, y'all on it? Y'all on the message version? Y'all not on the message version? Glory to God. Hallelujah. It's not, okay, hold on. We'll get it because we got to have it. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Bear with me for just a minute and we will have it. You guys, uh, read. He brought me out into a broad place. He rescued me because he was pleased with me and delighted in me. The Lord dealt with me according to my righteousness, moral character, spiritual integrity, according to the cleanliness of my hands, he who has rewarded me. For I have kept the ways of the Lord and have not wickedly departed from my God. Amen for the reading of the word. Glory to God. Now we're going to read Proverbs 18. Thank you. <laughs> we will praise God for whatever scripture that was. Proverbs 18. The word is the word. <laughs> <laughs> welcome to Victory Christian Outreach Church, everybody. <laughs> Y'all welcome. Do a favor and win a friend forever. Nothing can untie that bond. Uh-huh. Do a favor. Do it. Read it again. Do a favor and win a friend forever. Nothing can untie that bond. Thank you so much. Now listen, you may say, well, Pastor Daphne, you can have your seats. Amen. Pastor Daphne, what does that mean? That's saying, it's amazing how you can do something for a friend, what seems to be a friend. It will be that thing. If you do it for them and they, you got it covered, they in your corner forever. But when you do something for somebody that is only out to get what you can give, there's a problem. 
And what happens with us in the body of Christ is that we, we get to the point where we don't, we can't see clearly who we're giving to. We can't see clearly which direction we're going. So we end up pouring into places that are broken places. Do you understand what I'm saying? Glory to God. This is what got me in this whole thing. This, this is the part that grabbed me. Is that, see, in the Bible days, strong cities were cities that were surrounded by walls. They were surrounded by walls and you knew that it was strong because of the kind of wall that surrounded it. I.e. Jericho. Jericho, that was a city. Nobody, it was never thought that anybody could ever take down the walls of Jericho. Come on, in real talk, nobody did. God did it. Amen. It took God to take down the walls of Jericho. No man was able to take down the wall of Jericho. Now, this strong city was built to keep uh, trespassers out. The unwelcome invaders were kept out. And anyone who was allowed in was always screened. Now, if you owed taxes to the city, you couldn't come in until the balance was paid in full. This wall protected the city. Whoever at the door of the city, they knew the requirements. They knew the requirements. You can't come in here if you owe something. You got to make sure that you for. We got to make sure that you for us before we let you in. You see, we liken this to ourselves. We do the same exact thing. We build little mini walls of Jericho around ourselves when we've been hurt and wounded. Yeah, we do it strictly because we're trying to protect our hearts and keep anyone from ever hurting us like that again. Yeah, the title of this message is, See How This One Fits. See, because the thing that we're asking God is to help us see ourselves clearly. Help me understand, oh God, if there's something in me that's not like you. I don't want to be walking around here thinking I got that under control and thinking that you already took care of that and I'm pleasing you. And there's something in me that is not making you smile. Because it will be that one thing that will keep me separated from you. I don't want anything keeping me from being close to him. I don't want to do this if I can't feel his arms around me. I don't want to be a part of this if I can't experience him holding me at night when ain't nobody else present. It has to be that I can experience him in the fullness of his glory in order for me to be able to walk this one out. Anybody with me tonight? I got to get the whole thing. Come on. And see, what we do is in our brokenness, we, we find that we pick and choose who can stay. And if for one second they do or say anything that looks or sounds remotely like what we experience, where y'all at? Oh, I see. Oh, we in the house. Mm -hmm. If they do anything like it, then we done put them out. But here's the clincher. They don't even know they've been put out. They don't know they've been put out. And you don't tell them because that's your way of staying in control. You say to yourself, mm -mm, some things are just mental notes. I know how to deal with you moving forward, though. We hold this thing in us that pushes out people who, without even knowing what your issue was, did or said something that reminded you of pain you've experienced and immediately you done put them out. Why? Because you will not have the opportunity to hurt me like they did. You will not, I'm not, look, last time I was dumb. I didn't know what I was doing, but this time, anybody say this time? I know what I'm doing and you got to go. Anybody ever been in a relationship with somebody that did something like your ex? He said, oh, you know what? This ain't working for me. Did you use the famous, it's not, it's not you, it's me? Mm -mm, I got to go, it's not you. Yeah, God's calling me to himself. I got to go. Because you done fooled around, see, you done done something that reminded me of the pain I experienced before. And you don't know how long it took me to get myself up from down there, from that pain I'm talking about. I'm not talking about, no, oh, uh, you didn't call me back. I'm talking about real pain. I'm not just talking about, oh, I gave you some money, you didn't give me my money back. I'm talking about real betrayal, real pain, real hurt that is lasting a long time. 
And what happens is we begin to grow in God and we put this thing on this shelf back in the back. But we don't allow it to be laid on the altar to be burned up. So we carry it with us into our worship. We carry it with us while we flag. We carry it with us while we greeting people, not realizing that all the time that your worship, your flagging, your greeting is like a clanging symbol. Because real love doesn't hold fault, doesn't keep a record of what that person did. You say, well, Pastor Daphne, that's crazy. So I'm supposed to just let people hurt me and then just go on? No, that's not what I said. I said that as you are praying and asking God to show you yourself and you see something that's not like him, you lay that thing on the altar. The person is his child. He will handle them his way. It's the hurt that you're laying on the altar, your heart that you're laying on the altar. I don't know about you, but there are many, many times that I, uh, not many, many, but one huge one that I was really hurt um, when God made a decision that I, I made a choice to agree with, but it hurt me. And I don't know if you've ever been in those shoes, but when I made the decision to trust God, when he took my mom home to be with him, um, I, I didn't, I wasn't angry with him, but I was hurt when I was mad, not angry with him but mad about the, the spot that I was in. So you can be upset about the spot you're in, but not be angry with God. That's normal. Anybody ever tell you that they don't be none of that? They telling the story. Because in your humanness, your, your, your feelings and your emotions get riled up because you hurt. And you're like, God, okay, I agree with what you, what you want to do, and that's fine, but I'm bothered because you let them live. You can act like you ain't said it, but you lying. I could think of 15 people God could have took instead of my mom. And I named them by name. Let me help you. Just so we wasn't, we were, me and him was on the same page. Take them because they're not loving, they're not kind. They ain't never going to do nothing for nobody. They going to keep hurting people and lying on people. Take them. Leave her. He said, girl, you have no idea how much I'm in control. And if you trust me, I'll show you. But it didn't take the pain away. So fast forward to a time when I had to, to, to be in another spot where he was taking, he, he made a decision to bring home my aunt. I realized that I was still really wounded. And I had to lay myself on the altar and say, God, I don't want nothing to stop me from being able to access you. I have to be able to access you now. Some people will say, well, Pastor Daphne, that makes sense. You should be, that, that hurts. Yeah, it hurts. But you can't be blocked by the pain. Because now I'm not trusting him. I have to choose to let the pain rest in his lap and love him even when I don't understand it. And that is so hard to do. Because what will happen is you will build a little city around your family. What, where are you at? What time are you leaving? Take your medicine? Where your stuff at? Drink your water. Drink your juice. I don't want you to die on me. Something going to happen. You know, these people dying all the time. And now you are anxious and you're all over the place. And you, now you're not trusting that God is always in control. So I had to take a deep breath and realize, hey, this little wall of Jericho you got, this got to come down. Because God can't move behind walls of Jericho. He can't move back there. He has to be able, either you're going to give him all of you or go on and keep the rest. He said, I, I, I'm a jealous God. I want all of you. I want your fears. I want your anxieties. I want your frustration. I want your pain. Give it all here. Because I created you and I know how to handle it. But don't hold it and only give me the happy you. Because that's not love, is it? Real love is vulnerable. And says, even when I'm hurting, I'm still going to be open to you. Even when I'm confused and frustrated, I'm not closing myself off. 
real love. Because I, I, don't y'all think God get confused, just frustrated with us? Don't you think that he's be like, what in the world are you trying to do today? Don't you think he should have walked away by now? Think about what you did yesterday. How she know about that? Get yourself together. Think about where he, think about when he found you. Should he really have picked you up? But real love makes you pick up something dirty and embrace it in its weaknesses. Real love will make you go past your fears and trust them, even though you shouldn't. So here we are, you look up and you realize that these little walls of Jericho ain't getting you nowhere. You realize now that, that you have been doing like they did back in the Bible days with the strong cities. They, they determined, they said who could come in and they said who, who was welcome in and they looked out to see who it was. And, and, and here's the thing, they made whoever owed anything had to pay the whole thing in full before they could come in the city. So here you are, somebody done done something a long time ago, you never made that person pay. But now the people that's trying to get in, you want to make them pay for what they did before. They trying to love you, trying to be there for you, trying to embrace you. I've I, I been down that road. You, mm -mm, no, uh, no, I'm good. You, here they are. No, 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 no negative motives, no wrong intentions, just want to love you, want to embrace you. And because you never got payment, so you didn't have a you didn't have a strength. You ain't had a strength to make them pay, but now you want the person that's willing to be there to pay. Don't that seem kind of unfair? Because you're now you're, you're requiring me to take on a balance that I do not owe. Anytime you got an extra balance on your bill, you be like, hello, uh, excuse me. I need you to help me understand why my phone bill look like this. Ma'am, you were in Cancun. That's Roman charge. I, what dates did you show on that? Those were the dates I was there. I don't owe that much money. I want to pay what I owe. I don't want to pay nobody else's bill. Anybody ever thought that somebody tapped into your electricity? You're like, why is my bill 400 and I live in an apartment that's 300 square feet? Because the neighbors upstairs is living life. And you call an electric bill. I don't understand why my bill, somebody need to get out here and check this because this ain't right. I don't want to pay something that I don't owe. Don't you realize that people get tired of paying the balance for other people in your life? People get tired of you putting them up against the measuring bar of what other people did instead of allowing God to heal your heart from what they did and trust God. Oh, that's too heavy, though. That's too heavy, though. That requires me to, to trust someone I can't see. Because I'm looking at you, and I know your eyes look shifty. Mm-mm. I can't trust them eyes. Like what I do, I just put my eyeshadow on. I got dark corners. You shifty. No, you're non-trusting because you're wounded. You're non-trusting because you're looking at me through blurred vision. You're, have you ever tried to look at your phone and the screen was cracked? You'd be like, eh. first of all, trying not to get cut. Eh. But you got to move it up so you can see the words because certain cracks will blur. There are those moments that our heart and our soul are wounded so deeply that these cracks are all we see when we look at people with good intentions. The cracks are all we see when we look at people that are trying to love us through. A, they're trying their best to get past that wall you got up. They're trying their best to stick and stay. But because of your issues and because you don't truly love God. Because when you love him, you trust him with your pain. Love is not just shouting and jumping around and, and crazy, sick, yeah, Bill, he a good guy. That ain't, that, no, 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 no. Real love is I'm afraid, but I give this to you. 
I'm scared, but I give this to you. I don't know what this is going to turn out to be, but God, I give it to you. Because if you're my father when I'm excited, if you're my father when you're opening up the windows of heaven, you got to still be that same father when I'm broken and I'm wounded. You got to listen. You can say, God, I need you to show me yourself strong and hold my heart in your hands. But you got to be honest with yourself. Find out if it fits. Is this you? Do you have walls up that you created to keep people out? Walls up that stop you from being able to truly experience an encounter with God. Because here's the clincher, y'all. This, this, this is how the enemy does it. See, the equation is take no risk and you'll avoid being hurt. But here's the setup. If you choose not to love because of fear, then you don't sow unconditional love. Unconditional love, true love with no strings attached, gives others the ability and the right to hurt us. Real unconditional love gives other people the right and the room to hurt you. Because unconditional love don't have strings. So if you say something I don't like or something that hurts my feelings, unconditional love makes me love you anyway. If you don't stand up for me when people are talking about me, unconditional love chooses to give you the benefit of the doubt. I say, well, maybe they just didn't have the strength. If you promise you're going to be there and you abandon me, unconditional love says there had to be a reason why. See, that is when it gets scary because you cannot protect yourself when you're giving unconditional love. Only God can protect your heart when you open up like this. See, what the enemy does is since you reap every single seed that you sow, you don't reap unconditional love because you never gave it. And that's the one thing you've been crying out for all this time. So he sets you up to believe that you got a right to be scared. You got a right to stay back here behind this wall. You remember what they did. You remember what they said. You remember how they treated you when you tried to love them. You hear it. Anybody know what I'm talking about? You hear the thoughts. When you see them, you think about what happened. When, you, when you're trying to pray, it comes up in your thoughts. When you're trying to get your head on straight. When you're trying to love again, it comes back up again. The enemy keeps replaying it. Apostle Dora say, when you rehearse it, you nurse it. And it plays and it grows and it grows and the enemy makes you believe that you're doing the right thing because they did something to hurt you. It's not your fault that you're back here behind this wall. It's their fault because they did what they did. But the Bible says that a man that is offended, a man that is hurt, is just like a man that's in jail. Not the one that did the offense but the one that held the unforgiving. So you telling me that I was wounded by what they did and because I'm hurting and I can't seem to get past it, I'm the one that's locked up in jail? The Bible says absolutely. Why? Because you can't move because of that offense. You can't get close to nobody because of that offense. You met them in church. It's the people that you hug and they hug you like this. People like, don't even worry about it. That was way too much. That was. It's the people that you go to go to see, and you did. They, how you doing, that man? How you doing? Can't never get too close because they they've been hurt before. Ain't no hurt like church hurt. Ain't no church. Ain't no hurt like church hurt. Because you're supposed to be able to come into the church and and get healed and restored, but somehow we forget. That when you walk in the church, ain't no robots walking around hugging you. It's people. People who have been broken too, like you. People who have been wounded too, like you. And people who trying, like you trying. 
and they're going to mess up and they're going to drop the ball and they're going to not hug you right one day or they won't speak one day when you need to be spoken to or they won't hug one day when you really need a hug or they don't call and check on you like they promised they would. You got My mom always said, give people the benefit of the doubt and stop holding people up to this bar that you can't even meet. You got this bar of expectation for people that you have not even touched in a million years. But you keep them out because they ain't met the bar. But yet every time God lets you back in, you haven't met the bar and God still embraced you. You haven't met the bar. You promised God you was going to pray every day at 12 o'clock. This was five years ago and you prayed four times. And he still gave you favor and you ain't lose your job when everybody else did. He still gave you favor. Your house wasn't foreclosed on. He still gave you favor. You walking with breath in your body when people been waking up choking. He still gave you favor. You didn't test positive for COVID. He still gave you favor even though you didn't do what you were supposed to do. He consistently loves you with unconditional love. Now, because you are created in the image and the likeness of Jesus Christ, you can do exactly what he did because he said that greater am I in you than anything in this world. So he requires you to do better than what you're doing. See, it ain't going to be, it ain't going to be that you ain't know. Because when you stand before God and you refuse to let that thing go that you had deep down in there, you get before the Father, you're going to say, hey, how come you didn't never let that offense go that you had? You can say, well, God, you know, I was trying to talk to them about it, but they never answered the phone. I was trying to, I was trying to get through God. I was having a tough, he going to play this moment right here. And he going to show you clapping. He said, yes, Lord. What happened to your yes is his question. See, because either we for him or we not. He cannot fully use you and get the glory out of you if you don't give him all of you. And we cannot allow the enemy not another day to set us up with stuff that don't even count in the end. You mad and hurt and they not even thinking about you. You upset and wounded and they done moved home. And you the one that's called. You're the one that's chosen. And here it is, you're the one that's bound. See, because the enemy don't have, he's not worried about them like he's worried about you. He's not worried about them like he's worried about you. See, because they, they, they ain't made no decision to grab hold of God and not let go, but you did. They have not made a decision that for God I live and for God I die, but you did. They have not been called from birth, but you were. And the enemy has been on your back since the day your feet hit that came out of that womb. From the day they gave you your name, he knew that you were someone phenomenal. He knew the minute that you were born that everything was going to shift and change. The minute you got your head in the game. This is why the enemy hates you so much. You're not called just in this year you've been called from birth Jeremiah said before you were formed I knew you in the womb I had a plan for your life that means he didn't just make up your destiny last year but you gotta remember and when you call like this you're gonna go through hell and back again when you're called like this people are going to abandon you people are going to betray you People are going to put up a front and they will walk the part out. I mean, and walk it for a long time. They will walk it and they'll play it until it's no longer convenient for them. They will play the part until it's no longer profitable for them. They will play the part thinking you're going somewhere and because God pulls you in a cave, they'll back up because you're not the next, be the next best thing up and coming. People will do it and God will allow it just so that you know that the only one you have is him. You don't need a group of people to confirm that his hand is on your life. You don't need anybody's yes to confirm that you are his call and his chosen. But you have to make the decision to stick to the decision 
You see, the setup of the enemy is if he can keep you infected with the pain of the offense and you won't show unconditional love. His goal is achieved. You receive nothing but conditional love with strings attached. And your heart is broken in the same spot over and over again. Because you reap what you sow, if all you sow is conditional love, all you will get back is what? And you're crying out to God, hurt because of the seeds that you sowed. So Pastor Daphne, how do I change it? Because that hurt me. How do I change it? Because I took a chance and I trusted them. How do I change it? Because that, that broke my heart in a place that I can't even explain. You have to lay your behind on the altar. You can't get, you cannot accomplish what you need to do without a consistent lifestyle of prayer. This walk requires you to be in communication with your father. I don't know any job that y'all have worked that you ain't never had to talk to the supervisor. If you come on the job and they supposed to give you instruction and you don't talk to the supervisor, you get called in, do you not? They say, excuse me, is there, there's a problem today? They don't want to hear about your issues. They don't want to hear about, ooh, they don't want to hear about what's bothering you, what hurt your feelings. All they want to know is, how come you not in position to do the job that I gave you to do? We expect for God to be moved by our feelings. And he's not. He loves us, but he's not moved by our feelings. He'll take them. You can tell him about them, but he ain't moved by them. If he was moved by feelings, don't you think he would have stopped Jesus from walking with that cross? If he was moved by feelings, don't you think that he would have not let them put nails in both hands and feet? If he was moved by feelings, don't you think he would have said enough was enough after they beat him all night long? But because what he has to do is greater than what you feel, he cannot be moved by your feelings. He can only be moved by where he's taking you and what he has called you to do. Your feelings are neither here nor there. And he said, well, I can't tell him how I feel. Yeah, go ahead. Because Jesus said, Father, Father, Abba, Abba. Why have you forsaken me? Those were his feelings. He felt alone. He felt abandoned. But because God could not be near where sin was, and he carried all of our sin, he carried our sin, and he never did anything wrong. You are made in the likeness and the image of Jesus. You will go through rejection and you didn't even do nothing wrong. You will go through betrayal and you didn't even do nothing wrong. You will go through abandonment and you didn't even do nothing wrong. But you're going through it because you're carrying it for somebody that you haven't even met yet. There is a woman down the road that you've never met that needs know that you know what it feels like to be rejected there is a young lady down the road that needs to know that you know what it feels like to be abandoned there is a man out there that needs to know that you know what it's like to be wounded by your father over and over and over again because you're the look in your eyes is what is going to draw them because look they know if you lying or not God has called you to a broken people and the only way that he can get the glory out of you is if he connects you to the testimony. He has to connect you, Keisha, to the testimony of loneliness so that when you meet her and you talk about it, she'll know you're not making it up. He has to connect you to the testimony of poverty 
so that when you get to her and you tell her that you know how to use a WIC car, you know how to use the EBT car, you know how to go in and what juice to get and what bread to get because you were on WIC before and God moved mightily in your life and blessed you later on. You didn't have to go through being on WIC just because God wanted you to go on WIC. You went on WIC because there were ladies down the road that needed to know that if you went on WIC and now you driving a Mercedes, God can do it for me too. If you were on WIC and now your baby's a lawyer, God can do it for me too. If you went through hell and now you are up encouraging people, I could do it too. He has to connect you to the testimony. And the only way that happens is when you experience being offended and hurt, you lay yourself on the altar. I said, Pastor Daphne, I don't have no altar at my house. Yes, you do. You can have an altar at the schnooks. Wherever you stop and honor your God. Wherever you stop and say, God, I'm in a moment where I need you like I never need you before. God, I worship you right here in the middle of this desert place. I give you glory. You ain't got to have a whole prayer room. Uh-uh, you don't need it. And I love the movie War Room where she had the closet, where she put all the little posters up. But listen, put some posters up on the wall right by your bed. You can see them. If you live in an apartment, you put some posters on your bedside stand on your lamp. Put your posters on your mirror in your bathroom. You use whatever you got. And you put them little posters on there and you cry and pray over everybody on them little posters and God will honor that just like he would honor it if you had a whole room that was a prayer room you are a warrior and because greater is God in you wherever you cry out wherever you pray he will come and see about you he will come down to where you are because he loves you so do not be discouraged do not be dismayed yes it hurts yes it's uncomfortable yes you feel like you can't breathe but I'm telling you now that he is the air that you breathe he will will fill your lungs and he will take the rock off your chest and he'll give you the ability to breathe and keep moving when your feet felt like cement blocks but God will push you he'll pick you up and he'll carry you to your next destination I'm saying to you tonight that offense and being angry and holding unforgiveness will never ever hold you back again if you make a decision to stick to the decision to walk in the love of God you got to do it. I know you don't want to. Your flesh ain't got to want to. It's your spirit that makes decisions. Let your spirit cry out and get your flesh under control. You can and you will let it go and let God handle it. Let it go and give it to God. Don't lift your hands in this atmosphere. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Soon as I stop worrying, how the story is, I let go. when things start happening when I stop looking at back then I let go and I let God I let God have his way soon as I stopped worrying worrying Let go. Let go. 
let go, let go, let go, let go, and let go, let go. Father, we thank you tonight. We thank you tonight, oh God. Thank you for turning on the light for us to see, Father, the things that live in us that don't make you smile. Thank you for allowing us to see clearly, oh God, the little foxes spoil the branch. Thank you, oh God, for allowing us to hear you clearly tonight and to know that you are our Father and that you love us, God, and that you give us the grace to love your children, even when they hurt us, to love them with your love, God, your unconditional love. And we thank you for the grace to walk in that love, to trust you while we choose to love them. And we give you praise for it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Listen, when you get home, I want you to read Zechariah chapter 2. It talks about when he took him down and he showed him where Jerusalem used to be. He showed him all the ruins, all the things that used to be really wonderful. He showed him. Everything that was destroyed. He was like, what is this? He said, this is Jerusalem. And it shall be again. But this time, I will be a wall of fire around her. And I will be the glory in her midst. And what is that saying? That God will take all the wounds in your heart, the broken places, the monuments of dreams that seem shattered. He will take them and he will make them better than they were before. And this time, you don't have to worry about protecting yourself. You don't have to get somebody to look out for you. He said, you don't have to do it because I'm your father. I will be a wall of fire around you. Now, anybody can tear down brick. Anybody can find their way through a wall. But anybody that tries to get through fire will get burned. He said, before they can even reach you, they'll burn up because of my consuming fire. I will be the wall of fire around you and I will be the glory in your midst so they'll know that you are my child so do not try to protect yourself anymore don't try to keep people on the outside no more all you gotta do is be praying stay before God and he will show you their intentions he will show you their heart if you keep your face at his feet he will give you clear instructions he will tell you exactly how to handle you will hear him so clearly that it's going to blow your mind but stop trying to do it yourself because in yourself you're doing it from your brokenness and that ain't God's doing he can handle it he can handle you he can handle me amen Come on, if you, believe, if you believe that God has spoken directly to you tonight, can you give him praise? I mean a real loud, come on. Come on, just, I mean a real loud, like take over your section with your worship. Hallelujah, God, we bless you. We bless you, oh God. We bless you, oh God. We bless you, oh God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. 
Thank you, Jesus. It is well. It is well, and it will continue to be well. He's got this under control. Hallelujah. Come on, it's offering time, y'all. We're done here. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. It's offering time. Hallelujah. It is offering time. Hallelujah. It's time to give back to him that that he entrusted us with. Glory to God. If you are a member of Victor Christian Outreach Church, then yes, that is your tithe, which is a 10% of whatever God has blessed you with. And you can trust him and know that he will give you that hundredfold. Your offering is that which is exceeding above and beyond what you're giving as your tithe. And it really does open up the windows of heaven. I'm telling you right now that he is a faithful, faithful father. And he will never go outside of his word. Glory to God. You can trust him. If you are our online family and you are a member of Victor Christian Outreach Church, what I just explained to them belongs to you as well. You have to trust him, period. No getting away from that, period. And that's trusting him with your money. He will give back to you greater than you could ever give to him. And you gotta move now and don't wait. And don't wait, don't listen to your thoughts, don't think about your bills, none of that stuff. You just don't wait and you jump right in and you trust God and I promise you, you will see him move mightily in your life. Not just with money, but with favor. Not just with money, but with peace. Not just with money, but with healing. It all goes in the bucket, amen? Now, if you are one of our online family, part of our online family, but you're not a member, and you've just been a part of us, and you've been rocking with us all this time, we want to tell you thank you from the bottom of our hearts for every time that you click on to this service. You are a part of us, and we pray for you, and we appreciate God for you. We do not want you to sow your tithe into this house. That is the tithe that you give to your pastor, to your shepherd. That is the house that's covering your life. I pray for you, but I am not the house that covers you like that pastor does. That's your pastor, and you serve into that ground. If you choose, if you feel that God is speaking to you and you want to sow into the vision of this house, we appreciate you, and we honor you for that. Amen. You are our family, and we support one another. Anything you need, you can inbox us, and we will come running after you in the name of Jesus. He will give us the grace to be able to meet every need in Jesus' name. If you're ready to give, it's time to give. You can go to our website, which is www.victorystl.com, and you click on Donate Giving and go to Donate Now, and it takes you to PayPal, and that's a secure site. Or you can go to Cash App, which is dollar sign B C O C Church. And if you like my mom and you like to write checks so you can keep a balance, then you, you can come and mail, you can mail it to 7091 Olive Boulevard in U City, Missouri, 63130. Uh, or you can come up, you can come to the church and you can drop it in the tithe box. Amen. We love you so much and we believe God for your success and for your future. He is faithful. He does not fail, period. No matter how long it seems it's taking, just remind your mind that God is always in control. Glory to God. Let's pray over our giving. Father, we thank you. Thank you, oh God, for everyone that made a decision to trust you tonight with their giving. We ask, oh God, that you do as you did with the fish and the bread. Cause it to multiply, oh God, and be everything that we need for the house, God, and everything that they need for their house, oh God. We thank you right now, though, for those who wanted to give and didn't have it. Father, I thank you for supplying every need above and beyond, oh God, because of their hearts cry to you. And now, God, I bless you that you have covered this offering. God, take it and use it, God. Give us the wisdom to apply it. Give us the wisdom, God, to do what you want to be done in this community and in our city. In Jesus' name we pray. We declare that the curse of poverty is broken over our lives and that this truly is still our year of jubilee. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen to the glory of God. If you have your envelope, the ushers can take it for you. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Well, this is it, y'all. This was our Wednesday night. This is our, on, our midweek time together. And we are so glad that all of you came tonight. So glad that our online family was here tonight. And we thank you for being here. We appreciate God for bringing you to this place. Now, I want to say to you that this is Wednesday. It is the middle of our week. And it is still going to be the best week of your life. 
whatever Monday, Tuesday hell, whatever happened all earlier today, ain't got nothing on what's going to happen Thursday through when I see you again. God is still able to do the exceeding abundant. Come on, if you believe, you got to act like you're expecting it. You got to be like, I'm ready. I'm ready. I don't care what it was. I'm ready for everything that God is getting ready to do, everything that's on this way. Come on, I'm ready because I know the great God lives on the inside of me and he is a God of his word. Hallelujah. He will never fail. So you go and you have the absolute best week ever. Father, protect cover keep us god thank you for restoring our time thank you for renewing our hope and our joy and we bless you for keeping us oh god until we meet again in jesus name we pray amen and amen god bless you it's wednesday and you made it and you're gonna keep on making it and we will see you on sunday morning god bless you have a wonderful evening god bless you